Hi, welcome to Cubs and Culture for uh, 12-22-2018. Um, this one's going to be a baseball update. Um, the winter meetings were basically a bust. Um, uh, there wasn't a whole lot of movement. It wasn't quite like last year where literally nothing happened. Um, uh, it's It was just slower than it has been in the past. Well, some of that is because um, the new... Uh, the CBA, the collecting bargaining agreement from 2016 and 2017, the new one. It impacted last year offseason the luxury tax acts much more like a soft salary cap. So the Dodgers and the Yankees aren't willing to spend and be over it a, a year after year like they once were, which kind of freezes out the market. And then this year, uh, we're waiting on Machado and Harper to do movement. Um, so there's been very little that's happened overall. And then the Cubs themselves claim that they're having money is a little bit tight. So they're not really interested in spending all that much this year. So they're going to try to be creative. Um, so probably the main thing that's happened, the three, there's been three sort of things that have happened that have impacted the Cubs. Um, the first one is Daniel Descalso. Um, uh, they traded Tommy Lasella to the Angels, um, which makes me a little bit sad, but Lasella was basically just a pinch hit specialist. He, he really struggled defensively, and he didn't get enough playing time. And I think the thought process was to move him to get someone to give people more time off because one of the things I think happened with um, the offense was people were literally just tired. So they were, so I'm thinking they're thinking, um, get a per person who's better defensively so they can play the field more. Um, and so they picked up this guy named Daniel Descalso, um, who had a breakout season last year. Um, uh, again, uh, with the Diamondbacks on that, this makes me very, very happy because he is a clear upgrade over, um, um, uh, um, uh, La Stella and he, um, uh, it was a cheap deal, like five millions for two years or something. Um, which is fine. He's very defensively versatile. Um, moves out around all over the diamond. He had a breakout season tied to an actual fundamental change in his swing, etc. Um, so that's, um, so that makes me happy. The other thing that makes me happy is he used to be a Diamondback, and for the first six weeks last year, he actually, like, like the Diamondbacks did not have a good season last year um, because their offense was absolutely horrifying. Um, the only player who actually um, hit sort of consistently for the entire year was Daniel Descalso. He did a whole, what I mean by that is he didn't always hit, um, but he always seemed, especially in the first half of the season, if you needed like you absolutely needed a clutch hit he seemed to have done it um and while the clutchness is not really a thing if you look at the numbers it makes me happy um that this guy was on the covers for that reason um and then also because he's a diamondback or was a diamondback he didn't go to an um awful uh, he didn't go to something awful now the other sort of big news on that front is um, Goldie Goldschmidt? He's the first baseman. Um, he still looks funny to me. Um, he's probably gonna look funny to me all next year. Um, is I'm kind of sad at the um, sad and mad at um, um, the um, Diamondbacks because they traded him, uh, Paul Goldschmidt for uh, a good package of prospects and some cash or something, whatever. Anyway, the deal felt right. Um, uh, but he, they traded him to the Cardinals, so it was like a double whammy for me because it was like, oh, Goldie's gone. Also, he's now a, a Cardinal. Like, God damn it. Um, he's a very good player. He's debatably the third best player um, consistently um, um, in the league. Uh, for position players, he's only really behind um, uh, Mike Trout and Betts because he's at 40 war, um, etc. Um, he's probably a Hall of Famer, or he seems to be on pace to be a Hall of Famer. Um, he radically improves um, the um, uh, Cardinals, so that's going to be a little bit annoying. Plus, it's going to be weird rooting against Goldie. Um, so there's that. And then... Um, 
Uh, oh, good. They haven't changed it yet. The other thing that's impacted, um, and a lot of Cub fans are overreacting to this because they're obsessed with um, Bryce Harper, which I kind of don't care about because I don't, like, I don't think one player is not worth any amount of salary space. A player's like um, Bryce Harper takes up. Any case, um, Puig, Puig um, is now a red because um, the clear salary space to either um, sign Harper or just to stay under the luxury tax. Um, uh, Mac Kemp, Yasiel Puig, and Alex Wood were sent to the Reds, which turned the Reds from a um, re uh, rebuilding team into a, a competitive team. So the Reds, so I think the Reds are actually going to come in third um, this year because of this. Um, uh, Alex Wood is a pitcher. He's a good pitcher. Um, Puig um, and um, Kemper outfielders, which is why everyone's thinking Bryce Hopper. Um, I don't particularly like Puig, and so I'm just grateful he's on the Reds because that means he can't be on the Cubs, and that was something that was um, being discussed. Um, was um, Puig to the um, Cubs, which would have been horrifying to me. In any case, so that's going to be basically it. Basically, nothing really has happened outside of those things. Uh, there's always, like, tangential relievers moving around everywhere, but whatever. So I'm going to see you guys tomorrow. Uh, I'll get to the French Connection eventually. Just watched it last night. See you guys later. Cubs and Culture out.